But I want to step back a sec with, with technology, because I'd say that's one of, regardless of what happens in the economic climate, every company you talk to talks about digital transformation. Yeah. I don't know if that's a surrogate for some form of AI machine learning, because otherwise, what is it, you know? Um, but w when you think about, you talked about earlier with Fusion, 10 years, mm -hmm. does it feel like we're at a pivot point right now where this truly, you know, if you don't get on, you know, I don't know what you'd call the right term, but, but if you don't get on board essentially that you're going to miss the next two years are going to be truly transformative for a lot of businesses, or is that, I'm making you a soothsayer here uh, that maybe well, you don't want to be. I, I definitely think for a lot of industries, um, you know, some of the advances in, in digital, in software, um, automation, even if it's dumb automation, uh, are really happening. Dumb having automation? Parts. Well, is... you know, things things uh, like the real basic chatbots okay, or, or just right. being able to automate some of the tedious data entry. My holiday and things shopping, like that. that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Um, well, now, talk about more. Are there anything else when you. Healthcare is a huge realm. You mentioned yeah. a little bit about drug discovery. Um, we are in the, I hope if it's the final stage of the pandemic. Who knows about that? But what is it, what's happening on the healthcare front that we should really pay attention to? Um, so this these coming couple of decades are uh, decades where we are finally starting to see not just treatments for disease but real cures for disease. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, the FDA recently approved um, a drug for hemophilia that right now the treatment for hemophilia is you got to go in and get it's an the infusion. The royal disease, isn't the it? The royal disease, yeah. yes. So which causes your blood to not clot. Mm -hmm. So the treatment for that is you got to go in every few weeks and get an infusion of these proteins that allow your blood to clot uh, normally. But there's now a gene therapy that goes in, fixes your DNA. And I mean, we'll see how long lasting the treatment is, mm -hmm. but at least for, we know for a few years, it drastically reduces the need for any mm -hmm. other ancillary treatment. Um, we're seeing some gene therapies go down in the pipeline for other diseases too. And excitingly, I mean, there's a lot of rare diseases and it's great to see those get attention, but even more common things like di type one diabetes. Um, that we can actually just And cystic fibrosis. Yep. Yeah, by actually just fixing the genes um, because these are all typically genetic disorders. And that's what I personally find very exciting. Where it's going to challenge economically is they're expensive. So the hemophilia drug I mentioned, one dose, which is all you need, is three and a half million dollars. Now, over the course of your life, the the cost of treatment is, you know, several times that amount, which is why How do you even the FDA price approved that? the drug. I mean, you've right. got. That's I, the question. I hear about things like you know <laughs> somebody buys the EpiPen who shall remain nameless but went to jail, and and all of a sudden that gets quadrupled or whatever in price, but. Three and a half million, like, I get drug discovery is expensive. Mm -hmm. Is the U.S. still the place where it's like, here's where we make our money and the rest of the world is where we do our, our you couldn't charge that in most markets. Well, you know, th that's, market, what's, that's what's going to be the challenge. So these things are, ter they're terrifically expensive to develop. They're also terrifically, the, the newer gene therapies, they're expensive to manufacture and make mm -hmm. sure that they work properly. Um and what the FDA did as part of the approval process was basically the, the committee there said, look, over the course of this patient's lifetime, it is going to cost them several times more than three and a half million dollars. So while yes, this one dose that he's spending in this year is more than he would normally you know, be spending in one year, over the course of his life, especially assuming that it's durable and he won't need another shot, 15, 20 years down the road, which we're really not going to know until we get there, um, then it's an overall savings. But our, you know, the, the system isn't really built for that. Uh, not here, not Europe, other places. So we just hope it's like bananas. The yeah. price goes down at some point, right? right. For, so you've talked about things that are, you said the word decades. Is there anything in the next year, like just to bring it closer to home? If we said 2023, is there anything in that realm where you'd say, stay tuned, look for this? Uh, I would say stay tuned for potentially uh, a COVID flu combination shot. 
um, which Yay. I'm you know, it's one less shot. <laughs> okay. My kid is excited. Yeah, I, I, I regret to inform you, you probably have to get a COVID booster every year like you get your flu shot. But uh, several of the big manufacturers are working on a combination. So one shot, you're taken care of. And when I talked with um, Drew Weissman, who's one of the scientists at University of Pennsylvania who helped develop mm -hmm. um, develop mRNA technology, mm -hmm. he says theoretically you could get over a dozen vaccines in a single shot. and Protect you against every variant not just, thus not far just known to man right. and woman. And, and other diseases too. The, the normal shots, it might be tetanus, it might be mm -hmm. measles, it might be whatever. Um, you know, all of that is, is possible uh, with the mRNA technology. Excellent. Well, something to look forward to. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure.